Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Welcome everybody out there on the globe. This is the 15th annual meeting of Avatar Meher Baba's Circle of Friends. It is taking place simultaneously via the internet and Zoom to everywhere that you're hearing this and also at our headquarters at the Circle Center where we have about 11 or 12 people, brave people socially distanced, uh, et cetera. I do want to welcome you. Uh, this has been a tough year. It's We've all had to adapt, but we've actually evolved tremendously in that process. And you'll hear a lot more about that when our president, Angela Lee Chen, gives her report. I, by the way, am Dennis Walterding. I'm the uh, vice president. Basically, I'm just going to tell you the quickly the agenda where it's going it's going to be a welcome where we are going to have John Leiter do the beloved God prayer. We will have the president's address via video. We will then have a short election. Most of you have already voted electronically, and the election will only be for people here in the circle center who didn't vote electronically, and there may be none of them actually. So it may be really very easy. Uh, we will then have pizza here at the Circle Center. I'm sorry, we haven't figured out a way to virtually transmit slices of pizza to all of you in the globe. When I can do that, I will be bigger than Amazon, I can assure you. And, uh, and then, of course, the good stuff happens. We have a live concert with Larry Green and Jeff Wolverton, and they've been practicing. And I can tell you it's going to be a magnificent thing. Um, Angela Lee Chen, or one of us, will probably Angela, will give us the election results because I have a hunch she'll have all of the data. And then I am honored to say we're going to have the keynote address by Peter Nordine via Zoom and questions and answers. And that, and that will be pretty much it. There will be some opportunities to continue for those who want to continue with R the RT prayers and sharing uh, which is a normal part of that time period. So without any further ado, John, are you there? Would you unmute yourself, please? I am here. Shall we say together the, ma the not the master's prayer, but the beloved God prayer? Beloved God, help us all to love you more and more and more and more, and still yet more, until we become worthy of union with you. And help us all to hold fast to Baba's Daman until the very end. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. At this point, I am honored to introduce the president Angela Lee Chen. Uh, she will give her president's address. Jay Baba, everyone. It is pre recorded. I will share this and I'll have a couple comments at the end. A hearty Jay Meher Baba from Myrtle Beach. My name is Angela Lee Chen and it is my honor and privilege to serve you as the president of the Avatar Meher Baba's Circle of Friends. Since this is my first presidential address, I would like to briefly summarize who we are, what we are doing now, and invite you to co-create what is to come. We are an all-volunteer nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing forth truth, love, purity, and beauty. Per our bylaws, we are aspirants who strive to remember Avatar Meher Baba through love, fellowship, and service to one and all. The organization started as a group that met in people's homes. A mere four and a half years ago, we were able to rent a 3,600 square foot space in the Myrtle Beach Mall, which we call the Circle Center, directly across the street from the Meher Spiritual Center. We opened in order to host meetings of just about any kind. Speakers, musicians, crafting and dance parties, workshops, 
afternoon sahavas, and memorials, just to name a few. Anyone with something to share with the community could simply reserve it. We met and continue to meet our obligations entirely through donations of participants and through contributions of supporters like you. COVID came along and with it concerns about meeting in person. We reluctantly shut down our circle center for a few weeks while the mall closed its doors to all visitors. It was an excellent opportunity to turn our attention to virtual meetings, holding the same universal mindset that anyone now in any location around the world who has something to share with the Baba family would be able to create live interactive events and we would provide the platform and the technical help to deliver it. This is how Circle Zoom was born. It started on March 18th as one lone meeting to discuss COVID. It was followed up with the first weekly effort and grace discussion with Jeff Wolverton the following Sunday, attended by over 60 people. The next day, we started twice daily arti, modeled on the sharing that happens at the Samadhi, prayers and then music, poetry or readings by participants in celebration of Meher Baba. Arti attendees have been meeting continuously for over 500 sessions now from all parts of the US, India and the world. Dozens of us meet daily and have become very close as a result. You are very welcome to join us. In these eight months, we have exploded our meeting types, attendees, event hosts, and video collection. Our record week so far has been 47 Zoom meetings in one week. Our weekly newsletter lists them by type of meeting, or you can see a chronological listing of them on the Circle calendar. This phenomenal growth is not attributable to any single individual. It is a team effort, and you are the team. I would like to take a moment at this time to summarize all of our current online resources available to everyone with a computer, iPad, or smartphone. Our calendar of events is easily accessed through our website, or you can access it through a Google Calendar app on any computer or device. It would be instantly updated and translated into your own time zone that way. Login information is accessible by clicking on the event listed at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time called Meeting Info. We have a weekly Circle email newsletter that comes out every Thursday, jam-packed with current information. We hope you will stop and read it from beginning to end sometime. It is awesome! In it, you will find links and information about everything we offer. Sign up on our website to submit your email address. We also have continuously maintained a community directory for those who would like to reach out to other Baba lovers directly. Originally a Myrtle Beach community directory, over decades it has grown to cover anyone from anywhere who would like to be in it. Email us if you wish to be added to it. We have a very active, moderated Facebook page dedicated to bringing us together in his love. Members of the community are welcome to post anything of interest to other Baba lovers, whether it be about upcoming events or sharing stories, poetry, quotes, artwork. Last but not least, many of our Zoom events are recorded. In July, we started our own Circle YouTube channel to house them, currently streaming about 170 videos made since March alone and growing by at least 10 videos every week. Certain videos get hundreds of views within a week of posting. Since new videos are being added daily, it is recommended that you subscribe and hit the notifications bell to be the first to be alerted of a new offering. Links to all these resources, ways to contact us, and to our donation page are also easily accessed through our website amvcircleoffriends.com. Our community is bursting with innovative ways to come together in remembrance of our beloved. So, what is next? Meher Baba said, Real happiness lies in making others happy. How else can the circle of friends make you happy? And furthermore, how can the circle support you in making others happy? 
Just as most of our events are not generated by the circle of friends, but rather supported by the community, what if we could foster and support grassroots service projects in each of our own neighborhoods, towns, and even countries? What if we, as a global community, could generate ideas that manifest Baba's love, compassion, and perfect humanity in practical and tangible ways? What if each of us pooled our collective creativity and mutual support into projects, be they micro or large, that could bring a small dimension of the new humanity closer to reality? What would that even look like? We are eager to hear your ideas. Our contact information is easily accessible on our website. Welcome to the circle, friends. The best is yet to come. With all love for me, and on behalf of all those involved in circle activities, I wish each and all throughout the world a resounding J Meher Baba. Avatar Meher Baba Ki J. J Baba. J Baba. Thank you for watching that. There is a link to that, and I will definitely uh, share Thank that. Thank you moment. very much, President Angela Lee Chen. That was a stunning presidential report. Um, and it will be recorded, is that correct? So if people Dennis. didn't get all of those links, Dennis, this whole yes. meeting is being recorded, is that correct? The whole meeting is recorded, but that specific address will also be separately available and uh, probably up on our website soon, etc. I just wanted to, uh, to take a quick moment to uh, mention our entire board because uh, I did not include that in my president's address. That is actually available on our website, currently updated. I just wanted to screen share that as well. And here it is. So these are the board of directors, Angela Lee Chen, president, voted in a year ago. Dennis John Walterding, Vice President, Sherry Orr, Secretary, Jeff Stearns, Treasurer, very longtime Treasurer, Fereshte Azad, our Fundraising Director, Judy Mangle, now our Service Director, Heidi Becker-Sher, currently in New Jersey, moving to Florida for the winter, is doing our Community Outreach Fellowship and Education. John Leiter is our Director at Large, and Jim Knudsen, our second Director at Large. Jay Baba. As in every annual meeting that you've probably ever attended, ladies and gentlemen, for a nonprofit, uh, there are certain things that have to be done. The first was done very capably just a moment ago, and that was a delivery of the presidential address. I ask you all to accept that address. You can raise your hands or just say, hey, um, I'm sure that nobody's going to reject the address. So that should do with that. The other things we have to do is on election. I believe most of you have already voted electronically. Angela, is there an opportunity for people to submit an electronic vote still, or is that? Yes, um, sure. Okay. I posted the link in chat. In addition, we have some people in the Circle Center who have not voted electronically, and we will be distributing ballots to them, and I will be reporting um, those, or Fereshte Azad will be and Al Grasso will be reporting those results to Angela to add to the electronic tally. Right now, I am very happy to introduce our fundraising director. Very, very high energy, very intelligent, driven, and wonderful lady with a heart for Mayor Baba. And that is Fereshte Azad. And she's going to tell you about some wonderful original art which is available if you wish to acquire it. These are one of a kind pieces. So finish day, take it away. Did I do something? I did. Uh, don't worry about it. It's going to be easy. Always there's something. We're good. Okay. We're good. Yep. Jay Baba, everyone. Oh. What does this mean? Lower the volume? No, can we see your face? Lower the lid. There you go. <laughs> All right. 
So, Jay Baba, actually, I was very lucky that Chris Ott was here when I was getting all the paintings together that we would like to present here, Mayor Baba paintings, and he volunteered. He said, well, since it's my dad, you know, I can say a few things about the paintings. So I was delighted. And uh, without further ado, I would like Angela to pr please roll the film that uh, Chris and I put together for you all to enjoy. And please um, keep in mind that all these are available through the Circle of Friends um, as a benefit to the Circle and the uh, donating party, or sometimes it's 100%, but often it's just a donating party like an estate. Um, and you can contact me and the information will be there how to contact me. Jay Meher Baba, enjoy. Hello, um, I'm Chris Ott, and I'm going to be talking about some paintings that are for sale here at the Circle Center to benefit the Circle of Friends. And um, these, there's, um, a, this is a painting by my father, Lynn Ott. Uh, Lynn did uh, 500 paintings of Mayor Baba in his lifetime, and he passed away in 1998. And this is one of the few he left. Um, my daughter, and we're now selling it to uh, partly to benefit the circle of friends. Now, there's a little backstory to this painting. It's kind of unusual. Um, it was one of the few that my father still owned when he passed away um, 25 years ago. And uh, the story is that when, when my father met Mayor Baba in 1965, Mary Obama asked him, um, how was your work? And Lynn was surprised by the question and felt shy. And he said, um, well, I'm not really doing any uh, interesting uh, work at the moment. Now, Baba's response was, you should be proud of your work, your painting. And my father said, well, isn't that ego, Baba? And Mayor Baba said, what you do for me is not ego. So Mayor Baba took that to mean that um, all this painting that he did after that was for Bob, um, or even before, and that uh, he saw art as a path to God and that pleased Baba. So, um, but at the time that they, they had this conversation about Lynn's work, what Lynn's work was, was a um, period in his work called the Golden Period. You've heard of the blue period of Picasso, and this was Lynn's golden period. And his paintings were all painted in sort of shades of gold, a lot of orange and yellow, and some green. And um, this originally was one of those paintings that he was working on at that time when he met Bob. And it will, will these, um, and you see a female figure at the top, you see a face. And on the right, going up, you see those golds that I'm talking about, but also the, the whole figure is kind of golden. Now, he painted that in 1964, the year he heard of Baba. And it was years later, when he was painting Baba, that he took one of these paintings out um, from uh, his shed, and he painted Baba right over it. So what you have then, is you have two periods of time spaced about 10 years apart. You have this, which is 1964. All well, this, this charcoal, okay, this figure, that orange, okay. Also, texture was something he used to use a lot. Um, you find that there. Um, and then here you have the new painting done in the 70s and of Baba. But you have some of the golden period showing right through Baba's face, and right through his arm. So it's very unique. So there's kind of like two time dimensions going on at the same time. And you also have two uh, palettes. The first one is gold, of course, and then Baba is in much more primary colors the way Lynn painted later. Um, and it's possible, although I'm not sure, that the original painting may have been in oil, and then this was acrylic, but they're very um, compatible when you do the acrylic over the oil in art painting. 
Now, the name of this painting, you can read here, I hope you can zoom in, it's called Loving by Giving, which Lynn stenciled into the painting because he did things like that in the 60s. Now, I want to say something else, part of that story I was telling, is that with these paintings from the golden period, um, Lynn was going to have a show uh, in New York, which he had at the Levisco Gallery in the, uh, about the time that he heard of Baba, met Baba. And he sent an invitation or brochure to Baba for the show out of courtesy to Mayor Baba. And Mayor Baba received the, uh, the brochure for the New York show of the female figures. And Baba wrote to my father, uh, cabled him, cabled him in time for the show, and it said, I will be at your show viewing my reflection in your work. And that really surprised my father because by then he was beginning to paint Baba, but these were not Baba paintings. So Baba actually referred to paintings which included this painting as his own reflection, okay? <laughs> And so here you have Baba, and to me this painting always reminded me of the story of Buddha under the Bodhi tree. And then a woman came to him with food, um, I think on the last day of his fast, which he broke his fast with. And so I kind of imagine it like that. This rose and this arm were added later, along with this figure. And. Um, I, I was going to say something about the painting um, from a technical point of view. This is a very masterful work of art, and I'm not just saying that. This is um, a complex painting. It might have been too rich in, in its complexity for, for people, and that's why it never sold. But people have overlooked the quality of the, paint, of the composition and what's going on. Composition isn't all just forms. like pictures. The composition also includes colors. And to my father, colors, he's explained, had weight. So when he made this transition from the earlier painting to the new painting, he had to do a lot of corrections because it was limited where Baba could go. And what Baba cr created a kind of a, a, a problem to be worked out, which had to do with the weightiness of the color because orange and gold is very strong. And to balance that, he has to paint these dark colors here, and which are in a smaller region. And the idea of these weights and these colors is that if you do it right, you should be able to put a pin in the middle of the painting, and, and if you could literally put little weights, um, uh, sort of, appropriate for each color, you should be able to spin the painting and it should just sort of spin like a well-balanced tire. Hmm. And this is one, a, a painting like that. It's a very fine work of art. Okay, let's, let's talk about one of these other works. Oh, I forgot to mention what, what the circle is asking, asking a very fair $8,000. In the past, this painting would have sold for 10000 to or even more when my father was alive. But we're we're in the COVID uh, time and people may be cautious. And so we have made this uh, really reasonable and it really will help the circle of friends, which gets a, a large part of that. And then um, another part will go to my daughter. This is another painting by my father and it used to belong to Bobby Gardino who passed away and it now belongs to his brother, I believe. And he is wishing to sell it and again, um, profits from this will go to benefit the Circle of Friends. And the estate. Oh, and the estate of Bobby Cardino. Um, now, there, this, this painting is beautifully framed, and it comes with the frame, and the, the painting is sort of very lovely, lovely in that it is simple. It's kind of the opposite of the other painting, in that we have very um, few uh, disparate dynamics going on in this. In this, it's just a uniform color palette, a very simple face of Baba, 
that's very impressionistic. If you get very close, Baba almost begins to disappear. It's a beautiful Baba as you get back, and then, but it's done with a very light hand. It's got, um, uh, it's, it's, it's um, well, as I said, it's like an impressionistic painting. Now, the signature of this painting is just gorgeous. Um, and most people may think, well, what's the deal with the signature? Well, it, it is a deal. My father couldn't see hardly at all, and sometimes uh, he struggled to sign his own name. And so to have a very fine, crisp, uh, clear signature is rare. And this one is exceptional. And everything about this, I would say, is exceptional and just gorgeous. And I don't have anything else to say about this one. I agree. Except the price. Yeah. The price that is being asked for by the estate of Bobby Gardino, which again, part of which goes to the Circle of Friends, is again, $8,000. The same price as the other, but not. Hi. Uh, here we are with another painting that is for sale, and it is much less expensive than the Linot paintings. It's $1,200. It is by Jim Fresino, who's a longtime Baba lover and a quite established commercial artist. And uh, he has a website online, Jim Fresino, and um, he, is, he worked on the murals inside the tomb with Dot Lesnick. Um, I guess that was back in the 90s, I suppose. And um, he's done a lot of Baba paintings, and we're very fortunate to have this one of Baba and the Lamb. And uh, Jim, uh, oh, I, I can only say what I know about Jim. Jim's a good friend. I knew him. I lived in Seattle for a little while. I got to know Jim there. And Jim worked with my father in his studio. Um, when, they, when my father was working after he was losing his eyesight, he had assistants that helped him, and Jim was very involved in helping my father uh, to paint. And I, to what extent Jim you know, may have adapted, adopted some things from my father, only he can say, I don't know. But he definitely was um, a colleague of my father. And um, anyway, this is a beautiful painting. The colors are, are very... Um, uh, blue and uh, cheery. Very lovely. Okay. okay, and now we have this painting. It's by Charlie Mills. It uh, belongs where the Circle of Friends is very lucky to have this. Uh, Charlie uh, Mills paintings that are actually original paintings and not G. Clays or prints are extremely rare. He didn't do that many uh, paintings of Mayor Baba. And unlike some artists, um, so this is a very rare painting, and Charlie Mills is no longer painting. He's retired, and he's moved to the border between Cal um, Oregon and California. Is that right? Yeah, and he also started doing a lot of um, contemporary Abstract. abstracts. Right, he sort of moved away from doing these figurative paintings. So there's not that many of them in the world, and there won't be any more. And this one is very reasonably priced at $3,500. Now. You may not immediately see the signature of Charlie, but because it, it's lightly painted in greens right here, and it has the year, which is 1985. And uh, of course, it's a typically beautiful picture of Charlie. You want to zoom in on that face because it's just, it's just exquisite. Got the signature, and Baba's face is so beautiful. Yeah, and the hand is well drawn, and the colors are very calming. And again, it comes with a frame, um, and we are just about done with all this artwork that we're describing. Uh, I do want to say one thing is that uh, all offers will be considered, so don't be shy if you can't afford the prices that are being asked. Go ahead and um, let Farish Day. Reasonable. No, and, and also we mean any reasonable offer will be considered, not any offer, if I said that. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Fetish Day, a wonderful, absolutely wonderful presentation of some pretty rare art.
and which is only getting rarer. Now, at this particular time, we're going to have some pizza in person. And um, we're going to have some pizza in person, but we will be very, very shortly at 545 having a live concert, which will be Zoomed to you um, at the uh, with two great artists, Larry Green and Jeff Wolverton. Al Grasso will formally introduce them at that time. And I don't know, Angela, if you want to use this 10 or so minutes for people who are out there in the globe to maybe introduce themselves or chat or do whatever they'd like to do while we are chowing down. However, it might make some sense. See you at 5.45. Sure, Dennis. Uh, I thought I would uh, share a short YouTube that uh, I found was six minutes long. And if people would like to uh, comment a little bit before the concert gets going, we can do that. All right, let me just pull this up. It's Baba's Universal Message. I have come not to teach, but to awaken. Understand, therefore, that I lay down no precepts. Throughout eternity, I have laid down principles and precepts, but mankind has ignored them. Man's inability to live God's words makes the Avtar's teaching a mockery. Instead of practicing the compassion he taught, man has waged crusades in his name. Instead of living the humility, purity and truth of his words, man has given way to hatred, greed and violence. Because man has been deaf to the principles and precepts laid down by God in the past, in this present avtaric form, I observe silence. You have asked for and been given enough words. It is now time to live them. To get nearer and nearer to God, you have to get further and further away from I, my, me and mine. You have not to renounce anything except your own self. It is as simple as that, though found to be almost impossible. It is possible for you to renounce your limited self by my grace. I have come to release that grace. I repeat, I lay down no precepts. When I release the tide of truth which I have come to give, Men's daily lives will be the living precept. The words I have not spoken will come to life in them. I veil myself from man by his own curtain of ignorance and manifest my glory to a few.
My present avataric form is the last incarnation of this cycle of time. Hence my manifestation will be the greatest. When I break my silence the impact of my love will be universal and all life and creation will know feel and receive of it It will help every individual to break himself free from his own bondage in his own way I am the divine beloved who loves you more than you could ever love yourself. The breaking of my silence will help you to help yourself in knowing your real self. All this world confusion and chaos was inevitable and no one is to blame what had to happen has happened and what has to happen will happen there was and is no way out except through my coming in your midst i had to come and i have come i am the ancient one